Welcome back to Practical AutoCAD and Inventor and another tutorial in our Autodesk Inventor Certified User Exam Prep Series. In this video, we'll explore how to create a pattern of features, a powerful tool for efficiently duplicating geometry in your 3D models. You'll learn how to use circular, rectangular, and sketch-driven patterns to replicate features, adjust spacing and quantity, and maintain design flexibility. Understanding patterns will help you work smarter, reduce repetitive tasks, and improve your efficiency, an important skill for the certification exam. Let's get started. The first type of pattern we're going to look at is a circular pattern. In this case, I have this model of a truck wheel. It's a cast iron object with some holes and that kind of stuff in it. And I want to pattern this hole and this fillet a number of times around the web of this wheel to complete the design. So in order to do so, I'm going to make sure I'm on the 3D model tab up here at the top. I'm going to navigate over to the pattern panel and I'm going to choose the circular tool here on the uh, panel. And it, the first thing that it prompts me for is to select my features. I don't have to click on the button, it's already selected for me. So I can simply come to the model and I can select my features. I could say I want that hole and I want that fillet or alternatively I could come over here and say I want that hole and I want that fillet. Where you choose them it doesn't really matter. The next thing that I want to do is select the rotational axis. I have to come up here to this button right here and physically click on that button for my rotational axis and then I can come in and I can choose the rotational axis. Because all of these circles have the same center of this, in this case, the z-axis, I can pick this, or I could pick this, I could pick the outside, or I could come over here and I can choose the z-axis, whichever works for me. I'm sim simply going to make it easy and pick the inside of that. Then you'll see it simulates the holes that they're going to be placed. At this point, I could come in and I could change the number of holes. Say I only wanted three. I can even change the number of degrees that they fill. So if I only wanted them to fill half of the circle, for example, I could say 180 degrees here, and they're only going to fill half of the circle. But in this case, I want it to fill the whole circle, so I'll say 360 degrees, and I'll change that maybe to five, and say OK. And now you can see that you've got that hole that's patterned and uh, ready to go as far as my design. One of the nice things is, is it is completely flexible and if I decide later on that I indeed want six holes I can simply come over here to the fillet or to the circular pattern tool and I can double click on it and I can change that number right here to six instead and choose OK. So it makes it much easier to modify the design in the future. Next we're going to look at a rectangular pattern. So I've simply got a block of steel here with a counterboard hole and I want to pattern this hole a number of times on this block. So I'm going to do the same thing again from the 3D model tab up here at the top. I'm going to go to the pattern panel and I'm going to choose the rectangular tool. It begins the same way by prompting me to select my features. So I'm going to say I want that hole right there as my pattern, uh, the thing that I want to pattern. And then I need to come down here and tell it the directions that I want to pattern. So starting off with direction one right here, I'll click on that button and I'm going to pick this direction as direction number one. Now you can see that there's a little arrow here telling me which direction it wants to go. And obviously this isn't what I want because it would pattern it off of the object. So I can turn that arrow around by choosing the flip button here. And then I can tell it how many I want, say three, the distance between them, I'll say one and a quarter. And so that one's ready to go. If I want more going this direction, I can simply click right here on this button for direction number two, click on that corner. And I can say in this case, again, I want, let's say five in this direction and I'll make them one and a quarter again. So now I've got the complete pattern here <clears throat> that I would need and I can choose OK and it completes my pattern. Now one of the things to look at is when you create your pattern if you expand that in your browser you will see that all of the occurrences show up here individually and I can if I need to come in and 
uh, suppress any one of these occurrences that I want to. So for example, I could come in here and right click on this one and suppress that one in the model. So now it's no longer there. So if that hole was conflicting with something for some reason, uh, I don't have to redo the entire pattern. I can just go in and suppress one of those items. Next, we're going to look at another block. And initially, this one looks exactly the same. But if I look at this, you'll see here that it's not a rectangular block, but it's indeed like a parallelogram. So this side right here is not perpendicular to this side. Um, and my hole, the one that I've put in first, is right in the middle of this block. But it's no problem. I can still create a pattern that is aligned to these edges. And the process is still pretty much the same. So again, I'm going to go to the rectangular pattern. I'm going to choose the feature that I want to pattern. I'm going to say direction number one is this direction. And I want three of them. Now, in this case, I don't want them going off the side, but I want them as a multi or a mid plane, a symmetric. Uh, pattern here. So I can click this button and you'll see that it makes them symmetrically around the riddle, middle one. So again, I'll change my distance here and I can do the same thing in the other direction. I want to pattern it this way. I want five of them and I want a mid plane pattern and put in my number 1.25 and say, okay. So now I've got my pattern and it matches <clears throat> the edges. So they're all equally spaced out. Let's look at two more examples. Switching over to this one here, let's say I've got this sheet metal piece and I've got this hole and I want a number of holes along this line right here that are whatever distance apart. Maybe it's an index of some sort and I want to have those holes equally spaced along this line. Now obviously it's not a line, it's, it's a line here and it's an arc here and it's a line here, but I can still use that a rectangular pattern on this. You just got to get a little bit creative. Now I planned ahead and we'll talk about that. But the, I'm going to come in and again on the I'm on the sheet metal tab here but on the pattern panel I'm going to go to rectangular and I'm going to again choose the feature that I want to pattern which will be that hole. And then I can choose the direction that I want and I can pick this line that I have in this sketch here. Now you'll notice something strange happens. It has a little arrow that goes off this way, but it starts to pattern in this direction. And if I were to increase the number, say to like five, you'll see that it gets a little bit longer. But if I made it something like 11, it gets even longer. But you can see what it's doing is it's patterning along and then coming out this way. And it's because the start point for this pattern is actually right there. You see that right there? So this goes to me planning ahead a little bit. I knew that I wanted one hole right in the middle of this arc, so I put it here. In order to fix this, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to expand this out right here, and I'm going to say I want my start point to be this point right here. And then I'm going to say that I want it as a mid plane right here, so I'll do that. So now notice that I have my pattern going this way and my pattern going this way. And I could even maybe exchange or expand this to say 13 so that I have as n the, the number of holes that maybe my part requires. I can choose OK. And as I look at that front view, it's one inch from there to there to there to there and so on. <clears throat> the last step would simply be to come in and turn the visibility off on that sketch. The last example that we have here to look at is something very much the same. And you can see what I've done is I've created a sketch that has several points here, you know, here, here, and so on. And they were very methodical, very organized in this case, but they don't have to be. Your sketch could be anything that you want. Your points can be anywhere you want. But what I can do is I can pattern this upon the points in that sketch. So again, I'm going to the pattern panel here and I'm going to choose sketch driven. And now I can choose my feature. <clears throat> so I'm going to choose that hole that I want to pattern. And it recognizes that I have a sketch active. It sees those points that I've placed in the sketch. So it predicts what I want. If I didn't want one of them, for example, I could hold shift and I could come in and deselect one of them if I wanted to. But I'm going to put it in there and say, okay. 
and now it puts them all in. And as before, I would want to finally come in and right click on that sketch and turn off the visibility. Now there's two other videos that I've created on creating patterns. I will put them in the comments below. So make sure that you check that out and like and subscribe. Be sure to ask any questions that you have. Thanks for watching.